All right, so when it comes to spiking and hip and shoulders separation, a lot of you are having trouble uh, incorporating it into the actual skill. So what sometimes happens is you practice your spiking on the ground or you practice your hip and shoulder separation on the ground. And then when it comes to actually spiking in the air, it's not the same. You don't know how to actually get the same movements on the ground into the air so this is a progression that can help you learn how to do that better so alongside our strength training and specialized strength training we need to actually practice it in the skill in order to get that transfer a lot quicker and a lot better so yes you got to do the strength exercises but you also got to practice it in the actual skill of spiking and the way that we do that is by practicing it from the ground up so we start off with just throwing a ball. So can you just throw a ball staying on the ground while incorporating the hip and shoulder separation? For a lot of you, this is a good place to start because you may already find it hard to incorporate that hip and shoulder separation into the sequence. So we start off there. We start off just throwing the ball and then you can incorporate into a standing spike. And when we're doing this, we're not doing it 100%. We're doing it at like 50, 60%. Uh, we don't want to go all out right now because if we go all out there's there'll be a tendency to go back to your original pattern and then the original pattern and the new pattern will be competing with each other for reps uh, and it's going to make it a lot harder to learn so what we need to do is take the intensity level down a notch so that we can just focus on technique less on power and then we'll be able to learn this new skill a lot easier then as that gets easy and more automatic, then we can start progressing the throwing sequence by adding a jump before we throw. This is still gonna be stationary. We're just gonna jump up and throw the ball in the air doing the hip and shoulder separation and the whole throwing sequence. And what this does is allows you to train the hip and shoulder separation in the air. So we're focusing just on throwing sequence in the air. It's at still at a low intensity and we're able to get a feeling of what it's like to be in the air doing the sequence. Then as that gets easier, then you can start increasing the intensity of your throw to learn what it feels like to get more power now in the sequence in the air. Then the next progression is to incorporate an approach before jumping. And what this does is it brings in more speed and it makes it more specific to your actual hit. So you get, again, get a feeling of what it's like to approach, jump, and then do the sequence in the air. So the same thing goes for this, start off at a lower intensity and then start to pick it up as you start to get more comfortable with including the approach into your jump. Now alongside this, you're still doing your spikes so you can get the reps needed for your spiking. But what you're gonna do is that as you progress in the throwing sequence, you're also gonna progress the intensity of your standing spike. So first you start off with 50 to 60%, and then you pick it up, you go 70, 80% to 90, 100%. Again, what this progression does is allows you to focus on the technique first and ingraining this new pattern, and then you can start picking it up and starting to get more power into your actual swing. Don't emphasize power right in the beginning, just work on the feeling, just work on the pattern, then over time you'll be able to get more power into it. And you'll notice that you'll be able to learn it a lot easier and it'll stick with you a lot more and you'll be able to transfer it into your actual spike.